So welcome to the next session of the Rare Business Podcast. Today I have with me today Jessica Hagee. Is it Hagee? Yes? Hi, Jessica. It is. It's a hard A, yes. Uh, so thanks for being first today. Uh, Jessica, can you tell us a little bit about you, your career and the work that you currently do? Absolutely. I started out after I got out of college as an advertising copywriter. Okay. And about seven years into that, I went back to school for my master's degree in business just to give my brain something else to think about. And while I was doing that, I had read somewhere that every writer needs a blog. So I started one, only instead of writing writing, I drew cartoons incorporating charts and graphs, like Venn diagrams and XY axes and things like that. And then the blog actually got a lot more successful than my writing for ad agencies, and so now I do that full time. I'm basically a cartoonist drawing all sorts of things with charts and graphs, and I can use them to illustrate anything from sort of business philosophy to illustrations for any sort of editorial need you've got. And that blog's there indexed, right? Yes, it is. And it's, it's all done on index cards, is that right? It is. I'm very, very analog. I have a scanner that I just pop in and zoom, zoom, switch, and everything becomes digital. Wow. But yeah, it all starts out on paper. And so how many of those index cards do you have now? I'm up to about 3,000, which sounds really, really OCD if you think about it, but over six years, it's not so bad. That's probably quite a number of shoeboxes. It's going on on the fifth shoebox right now. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, you're about to publish a book called How to Be Interesting, an instruction manual. Now, it started off, I think, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, based on a, a Forbes article that, that just went, it just blew up in popularity. Is that right? Exactly. I uh, am lucky enough that I get to write for Forbes incorporating my cartoons and diagrams. And so one of them was how to be interesting. And I broke down that adjective into 10, 10 ideas that make what composes an interesting person. And so that, I think we're up to like a million and a half views, something crazy. Wow. And at the time, it was it just was going all over the place. And I said to my agent, "I should we should make this into a book, right?" And he goes, "Well, get me a proposal." So the proposal was put together. My agent shopped it around, and we went with a fantastic publisher, Workman, and they put out an absolutely gorgeous book that is just released today. And I couldn't be happier about it. Fantastic. Now, what's the what was the main background to the article? I mean, the main thesis to the book. I mean, why do you think there's the need for it right now? I think I was actually pondering, I was going to write an article about business virtue, sort of like what are the, what are the attributes you need to be successful in current time. Uh -huh. And it kept coming back to if you're an interesting enough person, people will remember you and they'll talk about you and they'll pass you on and you'll get the sale and you'll get the job and you'll get the interview. And so that word really became sort of what I hung the article on. Okay. And in the book you cite 10 simple steps. I mean, tell us a bit more about them. I mean, are they, I mean, are they exhaustive? Or are they just the things that came to mind? Or how, what's the, what's the thinking behind those, those 10 different steps? Uh, I actually wanted to make it, it was, all right, if you're an interesting person, what is it that you do as a habit? What is it that you do on a constant basis? And they're actually behaviors. So it started okay. with go exploring, which leads you to find new things. And then it was share what you find. So the people say things and then just do something like have a have a passion, have a cause. I went then further down. Once you've got something that's special about you, embrace that that uniqueness, that weirdness. And then just have the next step is have a cause, an actual passion that you're running with. Uh -huh. And then it just sort of gets into focusing what you what you're doing is minimizing the swagger because you have to be. You have to be sort of humble and approachable. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you're just a bore. Nobody wants to bother you. <laughs> and then uh, give it a shot. Be a little more dangerous and uh, adventurous and brave. And uh, 8, 9, 10 sort of get into the uniqueness and spreading that out. So don't do what everyone else does. Hop off the bandwagon. 9, grow a pair. Just sort of own what you do. And 10 is ignore anybody who, d who tells you otherwise. So in in the book, do you, I mean do you just expand on these? Was it with, with more diagrams, or is it is it more narrative? Or, or, how does the, the book differ to the article? Uh, the book actually follows the article as in um, amount of copy and amount of diagram. Uh -huh. So every step has ten or twelve different steps that you can take within that. Like 
extrapolating, diving deeper into the idea. Ah, so rather than having 10 steps, you've got like 10 steps, then 10 micro steps within that. Yes, very well said. So it's like a hundred things you can do. Yes, and it's all it's it's all very accessible and positive. Uh -huh. So you don't need to be a millionaire and travel the world to absorb experiences. It's small things you can do on a daily basis, regardless of income and stature. Okay, and so how do you think they all fit together? I mean, are there some foundational ones that you think are really important, or are they just all equally important? I really think that exploration is sort of the key, that if you're driven by curiosity and you get out and you do things, that will just sort of propel you into being an interesting person. You'll have things to talk about, you'll have ideas to recall, you'll be able to put your own thoughts together better. That, that curiosity is really the driving factor, I think. Okay. And that's the thing that underpins everything else, do you think? I do. I think, I think that's... A, that's one attribute of all interesting people that I've come across. Okay. None of them are none of them are uncurious about the world around them. Okay, and I mean, I, th th for me, sometimes that that I I speak to many sort of like business leaders, entrepreneurs, sort of small business owners, and some of them, they, the many of them will actually may actually find that quite hard because they get caught up in their in the in their day to day stuff, right? I mean. Yeah, it's. A lot of times people have sort of habits or ruts that they don't realize are habits because they they serve them well in what they're doing. Uh -huh. But it's that day where you sit down and you wonder, what have I been doing for a year or two years or three years? And you really have to sort of shake up your routine to get anywhere. And so actually when you talk about going out and exploring and things, it's not necessarily a go off and it's not it's not decide that you're going to go off and, and climb, you know, an unclimbed mountain somewhere in, in a, you know, the... the the outer reaches of the Himalayas. I mean, you're just talking about sort of almost like start the journey and start it small in a way. Is that right? Absolutely. It could be as small as uh, reading the news from a political point that you don't agree with or picking up a book that you would have, would never read otherwise and just sort of expanding not only where you physically go but where you go mentally as well. Okay. Fantastic. So based on those, some of those ideas, I mean, because and, 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 I think about my, my readers and my listeners and I think about the people I talk to and trying to get them to help me boil things down to, you know, the top tips to get started. Cause I'm really interested in this idea that I think there's almost like two states in nature. One is inertia and one is momentum. And I'm always interested in the, the small steps that we can take to create momentum. So what would you say would be the, say your top three tips for businesses and leaders if they wanted to create momentum to become more interesting based on your sort of observations, understandings, and the book, as it were. Oh, absolutely. I think because we have the internet pretty much on our person and at our fingertips all the time, uh -huh. it's, it's really easy to find different ideas and find different people who are doing unique things. Just Googling a weird word and falling down the, the rabbit hole of, of the internet for a half an hour until you land on somebody that's just, just fascinating to you. And now we can follow them, we can talk to them, we can ask them things, we can just sort of cross-pollinate everybody and really expand who we know and what we can do. Okay. And, and I mean, so it's, is it just, it's just starting, like, is it as simple as just let's pick up some things and then just go, and go exploring as a way of just expanding our minds or is there other things you think that people can do to, to make themselves more interesting? I think that's really one of the, the top things is just sort of get that snowball off the top of the hill. Okay. And find that... it, I mean, if you're in marketing and you find one, one really weird idea that might be a choreographer and you connect with a choreographer, well, now you have this idea about motion and kinetics and it might influence your next campaign. And really just sort of gathering influences does a lot for what we can do. I guess that's, I mean, that... that... As going back to a, what I was saying before, that might be hard for some people. I mean, and do you think it's to make that change? It's just as easy as sort of putting some time aside in your in your your day your in, well, in your diary it, on a daily or weekly basis to make that happen. And just, but is it is there a, a degree of sort of persistence that 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 they have to embrace to make that change, as it were, as well? You know what, it probably depends on the person because if you're very gregarious or if you're very curious, it'll probably come more naturally to you uh -huh. than if you're a bit reserved and uh, composed. 
So yeah, I think setting aside time aside is is a good thing if that's something you need to do, mm-hmm. or just giving yourself permission to explore things that are not exactly in your vertical or in your market. Okay. And do you think all the, the idea of becoming interesting just generally in terms of how people, you know, engage with businesses, whether it's via customer service or their sales process or, you know, or just even internally within businesses, do you think that's becoming much, much more important? Are people becoming more discerning or are they just, do we have a lower, a, a lower boredom threshold? I think because, because there's so much information, we're just bombarded with so many so many just features and benefits and ads and sales pitches and people and things and just stuff that when you run into something that's genuinely interesting or a person who's absolutely interesting and you're like, wow, I, I just, I'm drawn to this person and I'm not sure why, but I really like having them in my circle. Uh-huh. That does a lot for getting the interview, getting the job, making the sale, being recalled years later when someone's pondering who to hire for a project. And it's, it just seems, especially now that we've got so much information all the time, that being interesting is really one differentiator that you can't ignore. I think it's also something that, that, that absolutely drives word of mouth as well. I mean, it's like people don't talk about stuff if it's not interesting, right? Absolutely. So, Jessica, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, sort of real, you know, pointers for our readers and listeners, or is it just that just the idea of like take these 10 steps and embrace them and just you know strive to be more interesting I mean is there anything else you'd like to add on top of those is there a number 11 for example uh, I think 11 is just sort of keep at it and let yourself let yourself explore that and let yourself connect with other people and give yourself permission to go to different places and see other things and you never know if one conversation with someone you have today turns into an absolutely different career for you 10 years from now. It will have all started with you sending emails saying, I'm really curious about what you do. Do you have time to talk to me more about it? Fantastic. You, I mean, you, you never really know because of the tangential relationships that we're all building now. Absolutely. I, I think it's, it relates back to something that I heard some guy say once where he said, if you talk to enough people, you'll find the answers uh, that, that you're looking for. Absolutely. So. Jessica, there's one question that I always end these conversations on, and that is, what would you like to shamelessly plug? I would absolutely love to plug my book at this point, which I think we've been talking about the whole time, so you've been doing me a great service with all this. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I always add that question in at the end, just because it's, primarily because it's a very, almost an anti-British thing in a way. And it's almost like a nudge to myself as well as some of the other people that I that I talk to about saying, well, actually, if you give, if somebody gives you the opportunity, then don't be shy at coming forward. Mm-hmm. And, and so, uh, I, my husband and I lived in London for about a year, about about a year ago. Okay. And that was one of the first things that I realized as an American. One, as soon as I open my mouth and start talking, people are like you're not from here. <laughs> and the second bit was. We always ask, Americans always ask, what do you do? Yes. Almost first thing. And in in England, that is just, that's not, that's seen as nosy and very, it's just not socially done. Yes. So I can totally understand why you put that in. Yeah. So, Jessica, thank you for that. I mean, I'm, I, whilst I, I have seen the article and I have ordered the book, it's because it's not quite released here in the UK uh, as yet. And it's coming out, I think, in the next couple of weeks. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it because I, I, I really love the idea of particularly business books that, that embrace illustration with with ideas and, 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 and combine those two things to create almost like very powerful messages of, messages of change. Um, Thank you. So, I'm, so much. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it, as it were. Yeah, I, when I finally saw it, I was just so pleased. The, I can't say enough good things about my publisher and the design team. It just turned into a really neat object, sort of fits in your hand, feels good, looks good. I'm really pleased with it. That's fantastic. So congratulations on that. And, and thank you so much for your time today. That's brilliant. Thank you.